Welcome to Real Magic Review, my name is Steve Faulkner and today I will be reviewing Peter Turner's Masterclass with Vanishing Ink. Before we do that, can you please like and subscribe, check out onlinemagic.co, that is my membership site, it's been going 10 years and it's going strong, people love it, check out the testimonials, 800 plus videos, live sessions every week which we also upload, I did a, a whole session on the Lincoln Rings uh, last week and on, on the stuff that I'm working on for my show in a week and a half, I'm kind of feeding that into it and talking about my process and the uh, routines I'm coming up with and all that. Speaking of, oh, ch so check it out, onlinemagic.co. Uh, speaking of which, this is uh, recorded live, that's why I keep looking down there and pressing buttons, because I'm in the middle of rehearsal, I've got a week and a half, I'd love to say it's all completely together, but I keep changing my mind and completely rewriting routines that I've been doing for years, uh, which is exciting, uh, but that's March 30th if you're in the UK or your local, uh, stevefaulkner.com forward slash greystones, and there's a car alarm going on outside, but I'm not going to stop, because hopefully my mic won't pick it up. So, uh, I got really interested in Peter Turner's stuff recently. I saw, it's really doing my head in. I saw him at the session. I'm kind of new to Peter's stuff. I know who he is, clearly. For years I've known who he is, but I've never followed his work. And I'm starting to look more at mentalism now. I'm getting a bit older. Is it because of that? No, probably not. But uh, I'll tell you what it is. It's because... I, well, two things. I love. I like performing mentalism. It scares me. It scares me. I've got magician's guilt because the techniques, the actual techniques, are, are usually based around simplicity, but there's so much complexity around that, which Peter goes into. But I think it's really helped me learning mentalism techniques, even for my, my non-mentalism work, for my magic, my sleight of hand stuff, the, the body language, the, the non-body language, your verbal communication, all of those skills is has fed into it. So all the Banachek I've read and now the, the watching Peter's stuff and uh, Bob Cassidy is all, is all, you know, it's all transferable skills. So I really recommend you don't kind of, you know, stick with your sleight of hand and don't, don't look outside of that. Anyway, so this, I really loved watching Peter at the session. I liked what he did there and I really like this. Now this is only the first episode masterclass there are three masterclass the whole thing's out now i think it's two masterclasses and a q a or it might be be three but uh, so these are available all to watch now but i've only seen the first one again because i'm in this rehearsal but i'm so glad i found the time because it helped me uh, in the show i'm doing now he started off i'll just go very quickly into what he did he did a thing called peekaboo which is a very simple peak using billets. Uh, if you're new to mentalism, billets meaning just a piece of paper, a blank business card basically. And he's using techniques that you would already know with your card magic but in a more co covert way and a hidden way and as a mentalism peak. And it, these sort of things are so simple and this is why it scares me so much because it's so simple that you kind of look at it and go, I'm never going to go. And you do, you know, it was similar to Phil Smith's work that, I, that when I looked at a couple of his peaks, they were so simple but that's the thing we've got to get over, that kind of guilt. You know, talking to my friend um, Dave Anik about this the other day, or Dave Cook, about Magician's Guilt. He, we were texting and he was saying, you know, she should do a video on it. And I think actually, it's a, you know, so many of us suffer from it. The technique seems so transparent to us once we know it, is that we can't get over that hurdle. And watching Pete, you realise, and, you know, a lot of mentalism routines, exactly what you can get away with and again i don't mean that as in skill wise i mean just what what you can sell as a miracle based on something very simple and that isn't derogatory at all that's a good positive thing and this peak you know a long way of saying is is that and he shows a different version of it called spy hub where he does the same people uses a, a lighter and, and the the information actually vanishes which i think is really cool he goes into work about equivocate, he calls it prequivocate, is it prequivocate? Yeah, prequivocate, pre which is a way of, again, presenting it, not in the magician's choice way that, that can be quite simplistic, that quite a lot of us will already know, but he does it in a way that feels completely different. And again, a really good learning experience. It kind of, it takes you away from going, I can't do that because it's really obvious. And then realizing you can go, oh, actually, if I said these things, it would be completely covered. Which sounds like a kind of, you know, we, we learn that a lot in, in literature. But, you know, this is a way I've never seen it done before. 
he also takes something like the patio, patio force. I just feel weird saying patio, P-A-T-E, patio, patio, patio. Anyway, it's the force with cards, which seems really contrived when you do it a certain way. But again, with the language he's using, he makes it into something else that completely hides this kind of very obvious way of getting to a place which seems really, really false. There's loads more than this, by the way, but the thing that really, imp well, it all really impressed me, but I loved, he's got a version of Out of This World that the presentation around it isn't just you deal them, you deal them. It's all about, well, I'm not going to tell you what it's all about because I think you should watch it if you're interested in, but it fooled me and it didn't change that much, but it, it I completely got me and I just thought it was great. And again, I know the trick, I teach the trick, but it, it, it was done in a way that made it so much more and, and, you know, it's one of those things that I think I will take and do again, and it kind of revives my passion for that trick, which I do. I mean, I always get full by out of this world anyway. It's great. All the different versions. Another thing I really liked was he has a ESP symbol routine, and this is a similar routine that I loved and kind of forgot, and it was in a Larry Becker book in Stunners or Stunners Plus, with ESP symbols, and I think Darren Brown did a version of it, and the idea is they put one down first, and then you put one down, so they're doing it all first, and the ESP symbol cards match when you turn them over. No, that's not true. You put it that yours down first, and then they put one down, so it's them using their intuition, or however you want to present it. That's what really happened. Now, the way he did it, he used that, tech, that method, similar to that method, as an out. And actually what he did was took a lot of risks getting there, which were genuine kind of suggestion. And that's what I like about his stuff. And I'm not saying he's the only person to do this, but he is accused quite often of using stooges. And I have no idea whether he does or not. And I haven't, I've got no judgment on that. But what he does do is he takes risks. And if they don't work, he has a backup. And that's really smart because it gives you such a, a safety net of, of trying stuff out of trying dual reality out like in Peekaboo the first thing or trying uh, the, the ESP thing out and if it doesn't go around you've got an out which still makes it a great routine and all of his stuff's like that and what it means is you get some hits that you just can't unpick not that you would be able to go anyway as a lay per person but you just can't unpick and I thought it was it was really inspiring for me because I get scared of a lot of that stuff and and I thought it was a really good masterclass he has some Basic sleight of hand he teaches at the end as well for those of you that want to do out of this world with a borrowed deck and things like that. And also, he has a he even teaches a, a Sid Lorraine. I'm not going to go into what it is, but a, but a move I've been doing for years, one of the first full shuffles I ever um, learned in a different context. I did it with Triumph, he does it to separate reds and blacks from a borrowed deck, which is absolutely brilliant. So, great stuff. So, all levels this is for this is for your sort of basic, basic, basic. If you've never, you know, he really goes into what a billet is like I just did. He, he, he breaks it down if you've never known any mentalism before. He summarises it really well so you can tell he's taught a lot. He knows that thing of at the end, you know, go back over what you've done to remind people what you've done, which I think is great. He's got a really nice storytelling manner. He's got a nice teaching manner. And I really, really enjoyed the first session and I'm looking forward to getting uh, around to the next one. So... That's the Peter Tanner Masterclass. Uh, thanks, Vanish Link, for sending that to me. Please use the links below. You can sign up for the membership and you get all the masterclasses, I think, probably. I haven't really looked into it, but I think that's what last time I did, uh, they said. And uh, any questions you've got, do put them below. Sorry, this is a bit kind of rough and ready, but back to rehearsal now. Uh, just thought I'd sort of get in touch and show you what I've been up to. Another one coming soon. Take care, like and subscribe. And now it's your time to go and have a look at onlinemagic.co. Thanks a lot. Cheers.